Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Sonia Bennett Brandt. Um, I'm the Assistant Director of Institutional Relations at OpenStack. So I'm just going to introduce um, our topic quickly. Um, you can go to the next slide. So OpenStax is a mission-driven organization based at Rice University. Um, our goal is to transform learning so that education works better for every student. Um, you can go to the next slide. And we do a couple of different things. So what you've probably heard of us for, and the biggest part of what we do is publishing 43 free openly licensed textbooks um, with many more on the way. Um, we also create online courseware. Um, we do research into both um, learning science outcomes and um, outcomes of using OER. Um, and we also do uh, different types of advocacy work. And so my role fits really into that advocacy bucket. Um, and I manage our institutional partner program where we work very closely with about 12 schools every year to really help them expand and develop their OER initiatives. And so today we're gonna to be talking with Art Brownlow at University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, who um, was in the institutional partnership program this year um, about what really worked well um, on their campus with regards to their OER initiatives. So with that, I will hand it over to Art. All right, thank you, Sonia, I appreciate that. And hello everyone. Um, first, I'd like to talk a little bit about our campus, our school, the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Uh, we have two main campuses, plus several satellite campuses, all spread out about uh, 100 miles along the Rio Grande River in deep south Texas. We are one of the country's largest HSIs with a sizable Pell percentage, as you see here, thus our interest in affordability. And speaking of affordability, one of our most successful programs over the last few years is our affordable textbook adoption grant program. So we give uh, these adoption grants to faculty to redesign their courses with OER. Uh, they work with OER librarians to find OER and in in, in to integrate them into their courses. And then they are rewarded with $1,500 stipends upon completion of the course. And we do collect data, including uh, estimated student savings, uh, we give student and faculty satisfaction surveys, and uh, it also includes uh, student success data as well. We began this in the spring of 2019 with our pilot program, which consisted of three instructors and five sessions, sections of uh, courses. Uh, the seed money for this pilot came from our academic affairs office, and it was around $6,000 for stipends and training, but the return on investment was an estimated student savings of over $57,000. And so uh, we were encouraged to continue the program. And to date, uh, we've had 24 instructors that have received awards with a total estimated student savings of almost $287,000. And uh, currently we have selected or are in the process of selecting 11 more for academic year 2021 and 22. Now, speaking of this past year, um, I'd like to show several uh, initiatives that were successful from this past year, which was our first as an institutional partnership, uh, a partner with uh, OpenStax. One of the most important things we did was develop our strategic plan uh, from our work with OpenStax. And I think we've got a really good blueprint here for moving forward and that, that will follow the next few years. We also offered many workshops and PD sessions to our general faculty, mostly given by our newly hired open education librarian. And uh, this was a real shot in the arm for our program as well. Um, another thing that we did is we um, provided stipends for 18 faculty who reviewed OER texts for the Open Textbook Library. And uh, these $200 stipends uh, were um, uh, provided by our students, uh, grant funding rather, from our Student Success Office. And then finally, I'd like to mention Texas Learn OER. Uh, this is uh, an online OER course with certification hosted by Digitex, that's the digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas. And uh, for this, we, we had 30 faculty who um, took the training, took the online training and received certification. And for this, we gave them again, $200 stipends, again, from our student success grants. 
All right, um, then I'd like to finish by talking about marking and tracking. Uh, anybody from Texas is going to know about Senate Bill 810. And this requires OER marking in course schedules, uh, among other things, but uh, and, and it also requires institutions to provide an online search function for, for finding OER courses. Now we've made significant progress on the first one. The second one, not so much. Uh, we'll be working on that, I think, in this coming academic year. But as far as course marking is concerned, this is what we do. We uh, provide a statement for both zero cost and low cost courses. And we add this statement to course listings in our course schedule so the students can see uh, which courses are ZC and which are LC. Let me just show you really quickly here um, a couple of screenshots that shows you exactly the statement that we use. The, these are from courses from the uh, upcoming fall semester. As you see, the one on the top are zero cost courses. This is the statement we we uh, include all materials for this course, including textbooks and any software slash courseware will be available at no cost to the student. And then we also provide a, a statement for low cost courses as well. And for, uh, for FYI, our, our threshold for low cost is $40. All right, so now I'd like to finish by talking about course tracking. Uh, marking is the easy part, right? But finding those OER courses, that's the difficult part. Uh, before this academic year, our process to identify zero cost and low cost courses was very inefficient. We had no systematic approach. Basically what would happen is um, I had a database of affordability advocates from across the university and I contacted each one of them every semester via email and they sent uh, their courses back that they, that, you know, that they, they were using OER in, and then I would collect that data as best I could and send it on to the registrar for marking. Very time consuming and very ineffective. So what we did is this past spring, we designed a new form uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, all faculty will take, and we added it to our traditional textbook adoption process. This process uh, has been in place for years, and our faculty are familiar with this. And so we just added this one form to the process. This resulted now in an over 300% increase in the courses that we uh, have been able to identify as ZC and LC. So I'm going to take you really quickly through this form here and I'm, I need to share this screen now. And here we are, and this is the form that you can see here. Uh, this is the first page of the form and um, uh, we get to this point by sending out a listserv announcement to all of our faculty from our provost's office with a link to this form. Each form is uh, specific to the professor or the instructor um, who, um, um, uh, is, is, uh, who um, is identified in this form because uh, the individual courses for the professor is populated in the, in the form. I'll show you how this works. You select your term, fall 2021, and the first question you get is, uh, are, are the, uh, do you use traditional textbooks that cost more than $40 per semester? And if you say yes, these are just traditional text, you're, you're, you're sent on to the bookstore with a link to um, order your textbooks. However, if you say no, then you are presented with your list of courses. Here's my course that I'm teaching in the fall of 2021. So we'll click on that. And we're asked if this is a zero cost course. If it is, we click yes, and we want a little more data here. Is it an OER? Is it library license? No textbooks? And you can collect, you can click on all three of these or partially or only one. Then you click, click submit and you're done with the process. However, say your course is low cost and not zero cost. That's the case in my situation. I would say, click yes on low cost and it asks you to, to um, uh, define uh, the type of low cost materials you have. In my case, it's an instructor um, uh, created content. And I use also public uh, domain content. And I use one 
$4.99 mobile app. That's what makes my course low cost. Then I click submit. I'm done. Thank you for completing the form. Very easy, um, not time consuming for our faculty, but it gives us a lot of data and all the data that we need for marking our courses. It has been very successful and I do believe I'm out of time at this point. Thank you so much, Art. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to email me at skb3 at rice.edu. If you have questions about the Institutional Partnership Program or if you have questions for Art, I can pass them along. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, goodbye.